Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. After I uploaded my most recent video of the coasters, my dear friend Linny mentioned that she thought they looked like the inside of mushrooms and the minute she said it I had a brainwave. Yeah, mushrooms. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I've got to try and make some mushrooms and so I did and I'm so excited about the results and so today I've made a video showing you how I make these little mushrooms and the different projects you can do with them. Right, your very first job is to prepare some cone shapes for forming the shape of your mushroom top on later on. For this I'm using air dry clay. You don't have to, you could use anything that you think will work, but I like to use air dry clay. You don't need to wait for it to dry before you use it. It, it works just fine if it's still soft. I'm making my cones about four centimeters in height and you do need them to be quite tall and you'll find out why later on. So yeah, four centimeters in height. I'm just chopping it down there with a tissue blade. You just use anything you like, a knife will do fine. And I've, I'm making as many as I could be bothered to make, more than I needed, because sometimes when you're pouring the tops of your mushrooms, you end up with more than you wanted because you had leftover resin. So then you can make extras if you've got extra forms to use. So, Make as many as you can be bothered to make and you'll be safe. I've prepared about 30 grams of resin. You really don't need much. You can see there it's about a third full of my silicon cup. And I've used the Resin Pro Transparent Resin. I'm also using some white pigment paste and some brown pigment paste, which are also both from Resin Pro. And what I'm doing is adding a little bit at a time until I get the um, opacity that I want and also the shade that I want. Don't put too much in at first, just gradually build it up and keep testing it on the back of your stirring stick until you find that the stirring stick, you can't see it through the resin. So that's a good way of testing how opaque it is. And you really do need it to be quite opaque because it's got, they're going to have lights underneath and you don't want the lights shining through the top. Well, you might do. I didn't. <laughs> I wanted my light to come from underneath the tops of the mushrooms. Once that's mixed, just leave it for about an hour and let it really thicken up and it will make the next job a lot easier. Right, whilst my resin was thickening up, I decided to prepare my surface. And what I've got is a big sheet of paper and I'm just marking out where I want to place each of my um, mushroom tops. And I'm really spreading them out quite far apart and you will find out why a bit, little bit later on. And just marking out some circles. They're about three centimetres in diameter and yeah, You'll see in a minute why I'm doing this. Right now I'm just placing a big sheet of glass on top. Glass works really well because uh, you can use cling film on it and the cling film sticks. And here comes the cling film. <laughs> it's just normal cling film from the kitchen. Take your time to get it as smooth as you can, but you won't get it completely smooth. It, I, well, you're clever if you can because, you know, I tried and tried and I couldn't. It doesn't matter. Just smooth it down. All the little wrinkles, just smooth them down and they should be fine. As long as you don't have any really big wrinkles in there. It, yeah, it will work. Make sure your surface is completely level and adjust it if necessary. And then you're ready for pouring. Right, I have my thickened up resin and I'm going to pour it into each of the circles until it just reaches the edges. 
So that's why I did the circles. It really helps you to make sure you're pouring the same amount for each each of the mushroom tops. And they will be bigger than that circle. And I didn't make the circle to be the size of the finished piece. I made it so that it would be a guide for how much resin to pour. Uh, they really do spread out. They almost double in size. So, yeah, that, uh, that's just a guide. <laughs> I have actually sped up quite a lot of today's video because there was so much information to give to you. You would have been sat here watching all day. So, yeah, loads of this video has been sped up and I hope you don't mind that. I think you can alter the settings on YouTube to slow it down if you really need to, but hopefully it will all make sense. Right then, so I've got a few shades of brown alcohol ink. It really doesn't matter which shades you use, just experiment with it. But I've used Latte and Hazelnut for this one. Now, I did kind of get carried away because I find it quite mesmerising. <laughs> you know when you drop in the ink and you watch all the patterns that happen? Um, but really, when it comes down to it, you'll see very soon that whatever pattern it makes, it really doesn't matter because it that will go. You'll see what I'm... It's hard to explain without showing you, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. So just get your brown on there. Don't worry too much about the pattern which it makes. I use about three or four drops on each one and then you'll be ready for the next step. Right, I left those for about four hours. Uh, but with hindsight, I... I wish I'd left them about five and you will see why. I keep saying that, don't I? You'll see in a minute, but you will. <laughs> yeah, I left it. I didn't quite leave it long enough. The thing is, you need it to be still really soft um, so that it shapes really well. I wanted a smooth finish. Um, and the, the earlier you do it, the smoother the finish will be because it's still so pliable. However... It will drip down at this stage. Mine did drip, um, which wasn't a problem. I still ended I ended up that way with really smooth mushrooms. But I think, yeah, another hour would have made it a tiny bit firmer and they wouldn't have dripped down quite as much. But yeah, they worked fine. Just a guide. You kind of, you need to experiment. It's, there's only one way to find out and that is by trying yourself. Anyway. As you can see, I've draped it over the top of one of those forms that I made at the beginning and I'm just pulling the cling film around to kind of evenly distribute where the little folds are and then smoothing it down and that's all you need to do and you just leave it. Once you've, once it, the next day they'll be ready and they're just perfect, I love them. Okay then, so <laughs> this is what happens. Um, yeah, this is why I was saying about not worrying too much about the pattern when you're putting the ink on because it all kind of goes down and creates a really beautiful um, graduated ombre type effect. And I really love the way that happens. Uh, but as you can see, like I said, it's all dripped in it. That isn't a problem because all you need to do is get a little pair of scissors. A small pair works best because you've got a lot more control. And yeah, it's easier to cut them with a small pair. And just cut round until you've got a smooth bottom of the mushroom and it'll be fine. And I did need to do that with all of them. <laughs> Now, the cling film, that will stay in the middle. There is no point trying to take it out because all those little creases that formed have resin in them. And if you try to pull the cling film out, you're going to end up destroying the top of the mushroom because they're really fragile. 
uh, yeah so just leave it in it's not a problem to leave the cling film in I'm going to be painting the inside of the mushrooms in a moment and it just you just paint right over the cling film and it's absolutely fine right I've got some dark brown acrylic paint it's an Arteza one and I'm just going to paint the inside of each of those mushroom tops uh, I'm going to do it twice in, in fact no I might have done it three I might have done three layers I can't remember now but it, it needs at least two layers and the reason for that is because when the lights go in there they will shine through you'll if there's any little gaps where you haven't got any paint you'll see the light shining through and it really ruins the effect I like the light to come down from underneath as I mentioned before and to do that you really need to block all light out from the inside with the dark brown paint if that makes sense <laughs> the good thing the good way to do it to check is to just hold it up to the light if you've got a window in your room hold it up to the window and look from the inside, see if the light's shining through. And if it is, you'll need another coat. So, yep, yeah, that's painted. I paint the underside as well where I cut it, that bottom edge, just to neaten it up. And then they're all ready when you've done that. And, oh, I'm just about to show you, I think. Let me see if it comes up. <laughs> yeah, here we go. If you compare it, the one that isn't painted is the one that is painted. You can see what a huge difference it makes and it really makes the pattern stand out and the colouring stand out. And I really do prefer it with when it's painted on the inside. It would be interesting to try different coloured paints on the inside. Maybe white would have a completely different effect. So yeah, that would be something to experiment with. Right, to make the stems, I've got a string of 20 LED fairy lights and it's the ones that come on the wire. And I've also got some shrink rubber tubing that electrician can't say the word, <laughs> electricians use. Um, so yeah, it's just a, like a plasticky tubing which you heat up and it shrinks. So that's what I'm going to be using to make the stems. Um, so I've bent the lights I've gone a bit too fast. <laughs> My video is too fast and I can't narrate it. <sighs> I've bent the light to the correct length and measured up the tubing against the light. And then I'm just going to heat it to shrink the tubing. And I will do that for all of the mushroom stems. I'll leave links to my Amazon storefronts in the description to this video so you can go there and all the products are listed there with the you know you just click on them and you can go to purchase them from there uh, it just makes it easier for me to do it that way right so for the next one I don't want them all to be the same size so what you can do is bend the wire carefully and just change the size of it um, and yeah, it just these lights work really well for that. I've left the lights on so you can see them better, but also because, you know, when you're doing this, there's a chance, you know, you never know, you could damage the lights. And I would hate to finish it and then go to turn the light on and find out that I've broken it somewhere. So I like to leave the lights on while I'm working with it. And then I know if I've done anything to break them. Right then, now it's time to paint the stems because at the moment they still look like candles for a birthday cake. And I've got three different colours of acrylic paint. I've got a light, a medium and a dark. The light is Naples yellow, I think. And then there's a kind of a terracotta colour and a dark brown. And what I do is I start by going all over with the naples yellow the light color and then 
I will gradually add the darker colours from the bottom so that you get the bottom of the stem darker than the top. Right then, there's quite a lot to show you for this project, so I've sped right through the footage and I'm going to have to talk really fast to keep up with it. I've got a box from the works and I'm just marking out the spots where I want to drill it. So I'm doing enough drill holes to match the amount of um, mushroom stems that I've just made. Now these cheap boxes that you can get hold of for Art, for artwork in these art shops are usually quite cheap and you know the quality isn't always very good either so I've just got a sanding block and I'm giving it a good smooth down I took the hinges off and then I took both parts outside and gave them a spray of green paint. Once it was dry I went through all my paints to see what different shades of green I had because I wanted to do grass around the edges. So I got all my greens and just, you know, made it up as I went along and tried to make it look like grass around the outside. Before I could add the mushroom stems, I needed to think about how it would look on the inside and how I would cover up the wires. So I decided to make a piece of card that would cover up all the wires and I realised that all the lights would need to thread through there before they were threaded through the lid of the box. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm kind of forward thinking. So I've cut the piece of card the same size of the box lid and I made sure it fitted and now I've made a hole in there and I'm going to add some elastic so that the battery pack can be connected to the lid with elastic and it can be taken off to change the batteries when necessary so here I've just got like a clear elastic band that I had but you could just use dressmakers elastic um, I'm marking it out I'm going to cut two slots and put the elastic in. Okay, that's ready. So now all I need to do is thread through all the mushroom stems and it was a little bit fiddly but and it took a while but I got there in the end. So I have just fast forwarded this again so that you're not sitting around waiting for me to fiddle about with all those mushroom stems. But it was worth it in the end because it meant I had a really nice cover that all needed, I needed to do was just slot it in, glue it in and everything was covered up. Keep testing your lights as you go along just in case you happen to have damaged them along the way and then thread each stem through its hole. Thank <laughs> you. 
Once everything was slotted in, I used my hot melt glue gun just to make sure that everything stayed in position and I also wanted to seal the holes because I knew I was going to be using resin on the top of the box and I didn't want any places where the resin could leak to the inside of the lid. So I'm being quite thorough with sealing those holes and after I'd done that I also used the black tape as you can see here. I then covered it all with hot melt glue and popped that um, lid, the cover for inside of the lid, I popped that in and it was all nicely covered up. Right, by this stage I was really not liking the green <laughs> and I knew it was too late to change my mind about the colour but what I did decide to do was try to break it up a little bit with some gold around the edge just to give it a border and break up that expanse of green and I really do think that that worked. It's the Krylon gold leaf pen that I'm using and it goes on so nicely and I think it made a big difference. I actually used it along the bottom as well but I don't think I filmed myself doing that. You know the bottom of the base of the box not the bottom of the lid and yeah I think it finished it off nicely. I decided I wanted to use resin on the top of my box. If you're not into doing resin, you don't actually need to, it's optional. You could just spray varnish it to protect it. But I, I wanted to do resin, I wanted it to be really glossy. And I also wanted to use the dark brown which I'm using here, just at the base of all the stems, to and again attempt to break up the expanse of green and I think that that did the trick actually I added a little bit more interest adding the dark brown it kind of looks like the shadows underneath the mushrooms and then once that's on I just fill up the rest with clear I haven't taped the edges I'm just going to be really careful and just make sure it doesn't go over the edges I really do prefer doing it that way because you get like a domed edge. If you use tape it can kind of leak over the edge and then you have to sand it and neaten it up afterwards and also the tape could have brought the paint off the box you know when I pulled the tape off so I just found that this method was much better and yeah I, I do I use this quite a lot I do it on the tops of coasters as well just to neaten it up on the edges. Once the resin had cured it was time for the fun part which was adding those mushroom tops and I used hot melt glue just inside the top and then held it in place until it was set. And here's the finished box. You can probably see that I had a little bit of an issue with the resin and that was because I didn't seal the paint first. I should really have sealed it with some varnish or PVA glue or something because it started, you know, I got a lot of bubbles that kept coming up and it really ended up messing it up. I could have done an extra coat of resin and it would have been fine but no, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> Anyway, it looked good. Right, on to the next project, the night light. Now I've got um, three wood slices for this and for the first one I need to cut a hole using the saw, hole saw on my drill and the second one I need to cut enough holes for my stems just like I did with the box.
With the third slice, I covered it with glue, spread it all around, and then added the one that you can see there in the middle onto the top. After clamping the pieces together, I just covered the sides with glue as well because the bark could be quite fragile really. It could knock off if you're not careful, so it just gives a little bit of extra strength to the bark. I lost the footage, I don't know how but I did, but I actually used beeswax on the top and polished it up so it's a much nicer finish. Here I'm just carefully threading each one through the hole just like I did with the box. As simple as that really, not much to explain. I would say just be quite careful if the hole's quite tight because you could scrape some of the paint off your stem and if you do, that's fine, you just need to touch up the paintwork after they've all been poked through. After threading the stems through, I just secured everything in place with my hot melt glue gun again and it was almost ready. All I needed to do was add the tops of the mushrooms and it was done. As I'm watching, I'm catching glimpses of something I've forgotten to tell you about. I found that even with my two coats or three coats of brown paint on the inside of those mushroom tops, the, the light still kept shining through. And so I did put some um, adhesive aluminium tape on the inside, just a circle on the inside of each one to block the light. And it also helps to reflect the light downwards. So there we have that one. I really love it, you know. I think I think it's my favourite of all the ones I've made so far. Um, and the simplest, sometimes the simplest things are the best ones. <laughs> but I really love it. And my husband claimed it quite quickly to have as a nightlight on his side of the bed because it was just so subtle. And um, yeah, he loved that. And look at those shadows, aren't they fab? <laughs> And it doesn't end there. I did get carried away with the idea. And just to illustrate how versatile these mushrooms are, I've made a picture frame. And for this one, I didn't put lights in. I just put some garden wire in. And the good thing about using the garden wire is you can really shape the mushrooms however you want them to be curved. And it works really well for things like picture frames. And I think those autumnal colours really do complement the fur of my beautiful red Cavapoo honey. I also made this board, which was my very first attempt with mushrooms. And as you can probably tell, they're not perfect. They're absolutely far from perfect. But for a first attempt, I think they still turned out nice. I'll tell you what went wrong with these ones. It was... The, I didn't use cling film when I was pouring the mushrooms. I used tin foil, and it did work, but it wasn't as easy, and the effect is far more rustic and not smooth at all. Well, we've reached the end of the video, and I am so pleased that I managed to get all that information into a 30-minute video. Oh, it was quite a challenge. <laughs> Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And I will see you again soon. Bye for now.